Introduction. Your vision will become clear only when you look into your heart. Who looks outside dreams? Who looks inside awakens. Carl Jung. Everything you think or feel is on some spectrum of human experience. Even in times of isolation, when a sense of no one understands comes crashing over you, there are people out there who know how you feel. There are people out there who feel the same way, who have seen the same things, and who have lived the same circumstance. Perhaps many of them have it easier than you, but some have it worse. Everything we know and feel falls into quantifiable and qualifiable cabinets in our brains, filed between more and less of the same thing. That's how we're able to describe or understand anything at all. These spectrums are individually linear, from more to less, and vice versa. But they interact to weave the most complicated web of relative reasoning imaginable. Within that endless web are threads of our own experiences that ultimately pull our puppet limbs. Our personalities, while individually unique, are still broken down into preferences and behaviors that can each be measured on their own spectrum. If I'm aggressive, that means others are less so. If you are smart, that means you are smarter than someone else. None of these concepts would exist without defining a person's preference relative to the rest. I think I see the problem. Most of the personality traits we measure are subjective. In fact, they arguably all are. Even if you say you're smarter according to a standardized test, or maybe because your mother tells you so, tests all have flaws. More importantly, tests have limitations. Did that test measure your vocabulary, geography? How about interior door installation? Did it test the six different languages you speak? Despite endless subjectivity in identifying human qualities. Doctors and philosophers and pundits have ventured into the science of personality to try to give us a better handle on ourselves. Catherine Cook Briggs, 1875 to 1968, and her daughter Isabel Myers, 1897 to 1980, were among those to do just that. As the story goes, Catherine was acclimating to her daughter's gentleman caller, who Catherine noted seemed to have a very different outlook on life than the Briggs family. This outlook didn't reflect different religious or cultural beliefs, and didn't seem to be better or worse. It was just different. Catherine Briggs was fascinated with personalities and how we're all different, and she loved the idea that by identifying personality types, we could come to accept one another better. It wasn't long until she began reading tomes of personality theory by Carl Jung, whose writing reflected many of the ideas Catherine had come to believe on her own. To Catherine's joy, Young's ideas went well beyond what she had ever thought. However subjective a test might be, Catherine Briggs and Isabel Myers each worked a lifetime to develop the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, or MBTI instrument, designed to give us a readout of our predispositions according to Carl Young's personality models. The test has become world famous, available today in 30 languages. A greeting to fellow ENTJs. If you're reading this, you've probably already taken the test and have seen the results ENTJ. This means that you are extroverted, intuitive, thinking, and judging, at least compared to everyone else. These qualifiers outline your preferences between two ends of four spectrums, describing one where you get your energy, two how you process information, three how you make decisions, and four. What your outward-facing lifestyle is like. Don't be discouraged by the words themselves if you see a negative connotation, because that's not what MBTI is about. Without any implications of good or bad, these threads of your personality web are some of the stickiest. These four qualities shape your strengths and weaknesses. There is no right or wrong, superior or inferior. But you won't tap into your special ENTJ strengths. Or beat those weaknesses, without a little soul searching, and that's what this book is about. In ENTJ language, this soul searching will come in the form of examining some information, discerning its meaning, judging its application to you, and then doing something about it. The MBTI is a uniquely crafted instrument 
to simplify the key personality traits into binary answers that can be overlapped to get a bigger picture. And even if all tests have flaws, it's taking the information for what it's worth and putting it into practice that counts. As an ENTJ, you're equipped to do this with the utmost agility and confidence.